Thank you, Joey. Welcome, everyone, to our recorded session for the week of May 31st. We're glad to have you join us virtually, and we have the great news for you today that we will be returning together in person on June 14th. So you'll be receiving a lot more information about that later on, but I just wanted to alert you today so that you could begin to feel excited about it. This morning, our musicians are Joey Carroll and Nancy Johnson. Reverend Ken Ficklin is our associate, and I am Reverend Carolyn. Please join me in morning prayer. Mother, Father, God, Holy Spirit, we are grateful to be able to join together. For we know that when two or more are gathered, that you are truly with us. During this time of sheltering in, when we have not been together in person, we still know that we are one in spirit and that all we need to do is think about each other and that you truly are with us. As we move through our day today, we want you to know that you are in our hearts and in our minds, and it is you who we prepare these services for. We love you and we appreciate you, and we are so happy for this opportunity to be together. And so it is. We light this candle in recognition of the Christ light that lives in each one of us. Today, Sunday, May 31st, our daily word word is love. And the affirmation, I am a loving presence to everyone I meet. It has been said that the world needs more love. The truth is that all the love the world could ever need is already present everywhere because God is love and God is present everywhere. Created in God's image, I am divine love in human expression. I know that love is much more than a positive feeling. Divine love is the energy of oneness itself. As I remain centered in divine love, I know oneness in God with all people, including those who are dear to me and those whom I have never met. Divine love helps me see good everywhere and in everyone. I look beyond conflict and limitation and find the good that is always mine to discover. And from 1 John 4, 7, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God.
Thank you, Nancy and uh, Joey. That was a real great foundation for my message this morning. My message today is, I believe, help my unbelief. There was a story that I once heard about a person that lived in a small house built at the foot of a tall mountain. The mountain obstructed their view and made the inside of the house dark. They had read Jesus' promise about faith moving mountains and taking it literally. One night they prayed that the Lord would remove the mountain. The next morning the mountain was still there. Hmm, they said, just as I expected. Just as I expected. If most are honest, they would have to admit that when they pray, they really don't expect an answer. The same would be true in believing spirit for something. They say, I believe God's promises, but they really don't expect the promise to come true. Many believe that divine spirit can, but few believe that spirit will. Looking at ourselves, and looking at myself, I often wonder if that's not true with me. I believe that God has the power, but I may not believe in the outcome. So I turn to another story. It tells a similar tale in Mark 9, 22. From childhood, a, uh, a father brought his son to Jesus, and he was having what was probably epilep epileptic fits. And it often threw him into the fire or into the water and almost killed him. And he asked Jesus, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And in verse 23 of Mark 9, Jesus says, If you can, I can just imagine Jesus turning to this father who is seeking help for his son and saying, If I can? And he told the father, Everything is possible for one who believes. And immediately the father, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Unbelief is that lack of faith. We might understand, but we do not believe. True believing is taking that faith to the next step. From the revealing word, it tells us that faith thinking is not merely an intellectual process based on reasoning. The faith thinker does not compare, analyze, or draw conclusions from known premise. They do not take appearances into consideration. They are not biased by precedent. Faith thinking gives form without question to ideas that come straight from the eternal font of wisdom. Faith is a bridge that gets us from here to there, there being where we want to go. Faith gets us from here to there. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go on your journey of faith? Well, we know that if we talk about blind faith, it's an instinctive trust in a power higher than ourselves because blind faith does not understand the principles of being. It is liable for discouragement and disappointment. It's like if we built that bridge from here to there using beams and two-by-fours without support or without sidings. It would bend and lean. Faith, compared with trust, well, trust is a weaker bond of faith. 
but better than mistrust. As a rule, persons who merely trust the Lord do not understand divine law. If they had understanding, they would affirm the presence and power of God until the very substance of spirit would appear in manifestation. This trusting in God are the braces in setting forth that bridge to there. Doing the things that support our faith. Holding the truth. Faith is more than mere belief. It is the very substance of that which is believed. It is that which we believe. It works by love. Thoughts of condemnation and resistance must be released. And divine love declared, then faith will work unfeathered. Faith, working in spiritual substance, accomplishes all things. This is the faith that cooperates with creative law. This is our co-creating when we are allowing our faith to work in our divine conscious, working in truth. When faith is exercised deep in spiritual consciousness, it finds its abode and under divine law, without variation, without disappointment, it brings results that are seemingly miraculous. The faith of that person that lived in the house by the mountain. Maybe they were praying, but not holding the faith of asking that the truth be shown them. And they may have seen a beautiful mountain. Often when we pray, we need to affirm in prayer and hold in prayer that it is this, or as Carolyn likes to say, something better. We don't want to restrict what faith does in our lives. We release and hold that love that is within us. We let go and we let God. Do the work. And we manifest that love, that willingness. We affirm in prayer this or something better. And know thy will has been done. Because we know that in Matthew 9, Jesus has told us, according to your faith, be it done unto you. So this week, Let's work on our unbelief and know that Spirit is working in and through us as us. God bless and thank you. Thank you, Ken. Isn't that such a message? I believe, help my unbelief. It's certainly one of my prayers and I'm sure it's one of yours too. So now is the time where we would be collecting our offering, and it was, is with great gratitude that we thank each of you for continuing to support our wonderful sacred community during this time of closing down. You have been sending in your checks and your cash, and you've been putting the, pushing the donate button on our website. As we've mentioned before, we have an anonymous donor who sends us a sweet card every week with her or his donation. It's really fun to open that up. So to each of you who have been so supportive and so consistent with UCIR, we say thank you. And so it is.
join us in our prayer for protection. The, the light, light of God, God surrounds us. The, the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to having you be with us again on uh, technology next week and then the following week we will be together in person again and we will also be recording our mini midweek service so please enjoy your week working with faith